Most people are going through life stuck in a job that they hate. And if you're watching this video, chances are, so are you. So what's going on guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist. And today I want to tell you how to get unstuck from a job that you hate. So I want to tell you a little bit about one of my mentors that I've had in my life named Mackiel. Now I used to have this mentor named Mackiel. And he came into my life at a very important time where I was starting to realize that I was in a fork in the road. I was working in corporate America. I really didn't like the job, but I was at the job because it paid the bills and it felt like the right thing to do. I had spent my entire life studying, going to school, getting a college education, making the grades. And I was always remembering what my parents were telling me that once I graduated from college and got a job, I made it. And I was really focused on making them proud. I had a lot of pride in wanting to be able to do the things that they said because they had given so much to me. And so I start working in corporate America. And I'm feeling fired up. I'm a little anxious. And from one year to another year, I'm starting to find myself a little less satisfied. You know, the same paycheck that I made in year one, it just didn't do it for me like that in year two. And then year two turned into year three. Year three turned into year four. And I begin asking myself, is this really for me? Am I the person that I'm going to be spending the next 20 to 30 years of my life feeling stressed and depressed because I'm finding myself in a very bad position where I'm exchanging all of the time that I have in my short life for a position that I don't really want to be in? And that gave me a lot of stress, guys. I mean, I had all these friends family members that were around me, and they were looking at me like I was crazy. And I felt imprisoned because they were telling me, well, Uzziah, what do you mean you won't want this job? What do you mean you want to get out? What do you mean that you want to quit? Do you know how many people on the earth would kill to be in the same position that you're in? Why are you so ungrateful? And the true reality of it was, I just felt like I couldn't be understood because it wasn't the money that I had an issue with. It was the fulfillment of God's purpose. I felt like I had a purpose in this life. And I felt like that purpose was never going to be able to shine in that position. You know, I was coming to work every single day and I was doing the job and I was making the check, but I wasn't feeling fulfilled. And I always live by a common saying, what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So then that's when I find Mackiel. And Mackiel, he was this entrepreneur guy. He had been working for a number of years and building his own business. And he was very generous in a lot of the information that he had shared with me. See, Mackiel, he wasn't the type of guy that would go off to just anybody and just start spouting out why you should quit your job, why you should be an entrepreneur. Mackiel was one of those realistic guys that understood that entrepreneurship wasn't for everybody. So... Mackiel, I couldn't just go to Mackiel and just expect him to start telling me stuff. I had to be in a certain place mentally where I had to kind of go and figure it out and get it out of him. So I start sending these emails back and forth to Mackiel. We would exchange various conversations. And as I was talking to Mackiel about, you know, a lot of the different types of anguish that I was feeling at this job. He would always kind of tell me about what it was like to be an entrepreneur. And it started to make me more and more curious about, well, you know what? What if I really did this full time? You know, I started to think about this not really being the job for me, but I didn't have all of the motivation at the time. I was still riding the fence. And so there was one day where I sent Mackiel an email and I was just letting him know, hey, man, how am I supposed to know when is the right time for me to make the escape out of my nine to five job? Because I'm wondering if I'm really cut out 
for this line of work. I'm wondering if I could really be an entrepreneur. And I remember it like it was yesterday. He kind of almost had it as like a triggered response. He must have already been thinking about it. He told me, he said, Uzziah, you're going to know when you're ready to make the transition out of your nine to five, when the pain of your current position at that job exceeds the nervousness that you have about staying in. I want you to think about that again. Machiel, he wasn't beating down my door saying, go be an entrepreneur, go be an entrepreneur, go be an entrepreneur. Machiel was doing his own thing. I was going to Machiel and I was starting to pick his brain about, you know, what's this entrepreneur lifestyle all about? Tell me as much as you can. And the most important thing that Macchio ever told to me was, you will know when you're ready to escape your job, when the pains and the discomforts that you're getting from that job is far greater than the nervousness that you have about staying in your current position. And that's what I want to talk up to you about in today's video. See, you are probably in that place where I was years ago. Probably going through your job every single day, kind of want to be there, kind of don't. You're going to your job every single day, clocking in, feeling satisfied with gratitude that you have a position. But there's a small part of you that starts to ask, What's beyond this? What more could I do to make myself effective? How can I live out my true purpose? And so the first thing that I want you to truly understand is pain is a prerequisite for you to get unstuck from your current situation. See, it wasn't about the knowledge that Machiel shared with me. That helped. That played a factor. But by him framing my mind to understand that pain was truly going to be the number one transitionary thing that I needed to go from feeling stuck, feeling depressed, feeling hopeless, but riding the fence to then going out into that jungle world and seeing how to go out and be able to make a name for myself in business, right? That's what you got to be able to have. The prerequisite is pain. That's the first part, okay? You're not going to be able to ease your way into starting your own business. There are things that you need to know about how to run a business that you don't know now, and you're going to have to learn it. And it may feel intimidating, but that's okay. Because everyone that's ever started a business, they went through that too. You know, even if you see guys that are making money hand over fist and it looks like they're, you know, understanding the language of money in their sleep. They're just these business guys that was born out of the womb that way. Every expert at one time in their life was an amateur. They all had to start from humble beginnings. And so pain is going to be the driving force in your life. And what I want you to do as you take on that pain is begin to ask yourself, what would my career look like if fear wasn't an issue? See, I get a lot of questions from people about how to become an entrepreneur. And they ask me questions like, Uzziah, how do you know which business is the right business for me? How do I know that if I start something that it's going to work? What if I make the transition out of my nine to five job and I start this business and it's a complete failure? It all comes crashing down and I'm sitting up embarrassed. I got these friends that are laughing at me because they told me my concept would never work. Uzziah, how do I handle that? Well, see, because of the fact that you're thinking all of those thoughts on the front end while you're still at your nine to five job. You become stuck in your nine to five job because those exact same fears is what's keeping you right there in that mediocre place. See, it's mediocre because you're doing OK and you got a job, but it's not really the career path that's right for you. And, you know, you could be doing better, but you're getting in your own way. So if your fear wasn't an issue. 
let's say that money isn't an issue because I know what you're saying. Oh, Yaziah, well, you know, that's easier said than done. That's so cliche. You could tell me to jump out of my job all day, but I still got to pay these bills. The best thing that you can do is imagine a life where money wasn't an issue. If money were not an issue, what would you be doing then? See, the truth of the matter is, all of us are driven by a unique purpose to do something valuable to make a contribution on this earth. In this conversation that I'm having with you right now, a big part of the reason why I drop a lot of this knowledge on YouTube all for free is because I would genuinely do this for free. If I was just trying to, you know, steal and take people's money and it's all about the dollar for this and for that, these are conversations that I would never have. But the reason why I do what I do is for that very reason. I do what I do because I would do it even if money wasn't involved. And that's the reason why in this position, I'm a lot more satisfied. I'm a lot more fulfilled. I'm a lot more rewarded in the fruits that comes from me being in this position. And along with that, the money comes. It's associated with money, okay? So you know how they have that saying, do what you love and you'll never work a day in their life? You know, that's kind of a tongue-in-cheek statement somewhat. But the truth of the matter is, if it's something that you're more driven to do, you're going to put more effort into it. So if money wasn't a factor, what would you be doing with your life? The primary thing that you then have to think about after you get that answer, and I'm going to take a quick second for you to really think about that. I don't want to talk too fast. What would you do with your life to make a real contribution to this world if money wasn't a factor. So as you're brainstorming this, and as you're starting to really think about this and daydream about it in your mind, the next thing that you need to focus on after you have an answer to that is, how do I then take that contribution and monetize on it? Right. So there's probably a skill and a gift that you have. And on some level, you want to be able to do it on a voluntary basis, somewhat of a charitable basis. And then I'm sure there are other skills that you possess where you actually want to make it into a real um, career path for yourself. So if I'm working with different clients in my line of business, will I speak to one of my friends about, you know, how to be able to set up a business? how to be able to uh, improve your finances, how to be able to create additional streams of income. Absolutely. I don't always charge. But I understand that there's a market that's big enough for me to be able to charge in addition to all of the family and friends that I help out as well. Right. So in other words, what I'm saying is don't allow yourself to be shackled by your own thoughts and your own fears. So many people are asking, what if this goes wrong? that they never begin to think about what their career would look like if things actually went right, okay? And the last thing that I want to share with you in this video is what is something that you should be doing today that would actually help get you closer to a better tomorrow, okay? Again, that's the question that I want to ask you in today's video. What is something that you should be doing today to get you closer to a better tomorrow. So to kind of recap over the top three points, the first thing that I said is pain is a necessary factor to transition you out of your comfort zone into the real world. The real world is the real you, the real dreams that you have, the real gifts. The real effort, not just what somebody is paying you to do at a nine to five job as you coast through the day. What would your life look like if you were actually pursuing something of value to you? The honest truth is you're never going to know it because right now you're feeling a little uncomfortable, but you're not pained enough. You're like that dog that might be sitting in the middle of a road right on top of a nail weeping and mourning every single morning. Mm, mm, mm. And you're lying on the nail 
but you're never doing anything to get yourself off of the nail, right? There's a story about a dog that was at a gas station that spent every single day lying on a nail and there was some driver that just stopped by at the gas station that went into the store of that gas station and asked the person that was working at the counter, well, look at this hopeless dog. What's going on with him? What's wrong? I'm looking at him. He's weeping. He seems like he's in a lot of pain. Can you help him? And the person at the counter says, well, this dog is lying on a nail. That's why they're hurting. And they ask, well, why doesn't the dog then move? And then the person at the counter says, I guess just because they don't want to move off of the nail, right? A lot of you guys, you're weeping and you're mourning, but you don't actually want to move out of the situation that you're in because the pain is not extreme enough as of yet. So don't hide from the pain. You have to be able to invite that pain in your life because it's going to be a necessary catalyst and trigger for you to actually make things happen. The second thing is, what if money wasn't an issue? What would your imagination look like in terms of what you would be spending your time doing, right? Doesn't that open up a new level of possibility? Most people think about starting up businesses just following after something that they heard somebody else say about what makes money to such a degree that they do the greatest disservice in their life of letting their own imaginations give them the inspiration and the roadmap that they could be using to do the thing that would give them the most fulfillment. See, I could have been making money doing a ton of different things. I could have been in the computer programming world. I could have been in the recruiting world. I could have been a personal trainer in physical fitness. But the thing that gives me the most fulfillment is coming out and reaching out to you. And so that was the first thought without any money associated, no strings attached. And then I figured out a way to monetize on that experience. Don't try to treat those two things as one is the same. If not, you're going to do yourself a major disservice. And then again, finally, what is something now that you are getting closer to pain? What's one thing that you could be doing today to help you actually transition into uh, the life that you want to really be able to have? Right. So if you're sitting at your job today, what's the one thing that you could be doing? either during your lunch break, on the side at work, or after you get off to take one step closer to actually getting out of that nine to five, right? Is it maybe you're studying from a book about how to be able to grow your business? Maybe you're going to be tuning in to some of these videos on Black Men's Career and you're going to subscribe. Maybe you're going to download finally today that Empire Builder file that I've been telling you all about all along that's going to show you how to be able to build your own empire from scratch and starting your own business and transitioning out of the nine to five and creating an independent stream of income that would allow you to travel the world, right? If you're pained enough to do that right now, then you should click the link below. But you got to pick one thing on a daily, regular basis that you're going to choose to do in order to be able to move the needle forward. Because the honest truth is, nobody else is gonna do this for you in your life. You have to have the courage, you have to have the faith, and you have to have the belief in yourself that you are capable of getting and making this possible, of getting to where you wanna get. If everybody else has done it, so can you. <laughs> Does Henry Ford breathe any different air than what you breathe? No, but he did it. Why can't you? I want you to leave me a comment, and I want you to answer three things, okay? Three things. Number one, are you experiencing enough pain? Are you experiencing enough pain, or are you running from pain thinking that that's actually helping your life by running away from it. See, the pain is a blessing in disguise because as I went through those pains at being at my job and feeling marginalized and feeling like, man, I don't have any growth opportunities here. 
I don't see myself elevating from this position. I can't take this job and pass it down to my son. I can't even be in a room where somebody asks me, how's work, Uzziah? And I honestly tell them with a sincere face, oh yeah, it's going great. I would be like most other people and say, uh, it pays the bills. Uh, it's okay. Or I might put on a certain sentence, yeah, it's going good. But in my heart of hearts, <laughs> right, I would be dreading every time I heard that question because deep down inside, I knew that I wanted to be able to find a better way. Are you pained enough? And number two, are you thinking about what you would want to do with your life if money was not a factor, okay? Have you taken the time to think about that? If you have, tell me what it is. Tell me what you come up with. I'd love to be able to hear it. What's going to be your contribution? What's going to be your lasting legacy in the world? Third and final point, okay? What is something that you should be doing today to get yourself closer to the end goal? Pick one thing. Tell me what you're going to do today. And I might even reply to your comment. Okay, so leave me that comment. Make sure that you check out the Empire Builder. Don't forget to subscribe. Be your brother's keeper. If you like this video, give the thumbs up. Share it with a friend. And I'll see you on the next episode of Black Men's Career. Take care.